So I installed the new ignition coils, or new used ignition coil, on the front, and I still don't have any fire uh, spark plug right down there. So I hit the start button. Still no fire, but I have fire at the rear still, which is uh, very mysterious. So I've changed the coils around, I changed the wires around. This coil here is actually one of the coils I bought off of eBay, and I got it on the back. And if you look, got fire. But I found out that this thing has two igniter ignition boxes. This is one of them here, it slides up under the rectifier slides right through here. It actually slides in this slot right here. And then you got this one here. Now this one here has the color codes as the coils. Um, and so does this one. So I got to looking it up and looked on the old eBay again and I found these two here. You guys got both says 84 bucks 1984 V45 700 S Sabre CDI Niner units box set so I'm thinking that the igniter that ignites the front coils which would be this one is bad because I can unplug this one here, I don't have any fire to the rear coils. So I think the power generates through this one for the front. So I guess I'll be ordering a set of uh, Nina boxes for it. Or I might just get the one if I can get it cheaper than that because I know this one's working. So uh, what I'm thinking of doing is um, just order them and we put them on there and hopefully we get fired at the so we got a package <laughs> this is the igniter box that I got off of eBay and hopefully this will solve our spark plug firing problem at the front cylinders it's uh, gonna plug it in. Cause I really don't know what else could be. I have to do a lot of wire checking. But I think here's our spark plug. Let me hook our battery up. Okay, here we go. Oh, let me take these off the cylinders. Oh yeah, we got fire on the front. Oh yeah. Let's do it again. Can you see it? It's not very strong, but it's a fire. It's Try and get you in the dark here. We can actually see it. It's kind of hard to see. I'll tell you what, let me turn the uh, light out. But we do got fire at the front. Yes. That might do something. I don't know. But we can uh, try and zoom in on it. Still kind of hard to see, but we got fire though. I can tell you that it's it's kind of not strong. Maybe you can see it down in there because it's kind of dark. You can see it good in the darkness. So yes, 
we have fire. So I got the carburetors all cleaned and put back together. They really wasn't that bad. Um, the only problem with the carbs is, uh, and I'll show you, let me go get them. chokes are stuck on the carbs. There's only one carburetor that the choke works and it's just this one here. The rest of them are completely frozen. I accidentally broke the little tab off of this one that the arm pushes. That one's frozen. Uh, that one's frozen and that one's frozen. So we only have one carburetor that has an operating choke. I tried to heat this one up with my uh, mini torch to free it up and it just started melting this uh, little screw here. It's made of plastic. So if it runs, we can get it to run off four cylinders. I'll just order, uh, I'll try and find these things and have to heat them up. I mean these carburetors look good on the inside. It's like one of them had some rust in it. I think that's the one that goes on the front cylinder that we have compression problem. Some water got in it. Uh, but the rest of them were crystal clean inside, like it laid on the side and all the gas leaked out. I didn't see anything up inside of the jets. I did have to take the vacuum diaphragms out. I had a couple of slides that were stuck and uh, got them where they moved freely. But like I say, if I have to, I can try and order these separate. I did see a set of carburetors on there that need to be built, but I hate to buy a whole set of carburetors just for these choke uh, slides. So hopefully, if this thing runs, I'll be more tempted to put more in it. I mean, you know, if it runs and that cylinder uh, gets compression back, we won't have to tear that head off and see what's up with it but uh but anyway um I'll get the cars back on there sometime today and uh try and get some gas going to this thing see if we can get it to hit off I've been working on the badger which will be a video on this one uh getting it back together so Try and get this one back together as much as I can, and then we'll move over to the Honda. Hopefully, I can get to it today, and uh, we'll get it running. But we do got fire in all cylinders now, so we are good to go. So just hang tight. <music> the bottom uh, carburetors in but the top ones are really hard to get in so I'm going to have to heat up the rubber boots like I did when I took it out well, I probably need to heat the bottom and that'll give me a little flexibility to uh, get them to go in the top boots that was the only thing about these V4s with the four carburetors. The two carburetors are not too bad, but the fours, these boots are hard and anything. They are a job to uh, get the carburetors in and out. I think if we heat them up a little bit, we might be able to get them to go back in there. Just putting the cables on it 
which is uh, my hair. But Get them to lay down in there. Well, I can take a I think I got that one. Just have to be careful tapping on them. You want to catch it. Pop right in there. Take the rubber mallet. Slide right on back in the holes. Yep, we're good on this side. So that's all you got to do if you got one of these old bikes. Just even on a single carburetor old bike. If you don't want to tear up the carburetor boots, uh, you can just get you a heat gun, loosen the clamps, and just heat, heat the boot up. Because once this thing runs a little bit, they're going to soften up uh, eventually. But you can see there and then that one just needs to go back in just a little bit. Not too, not too big on it. Be all right. So, what I got to do now is tighten all the clamps, get us a gas bottle hooked up, and uh, uh, I don't know where this goes. It's a vacuum line. This oh, this goes to the pet cock for the gas tank. So we ain't gonna worry about that. We'll block that off. That's just vacuum. Um, so, yeah, let me uh, get these clamps tightened down. Hook us up a gas bottle. And uh, get us some battery juice going to it. And see what this old, this old girl going to do. All right, it's the moment y'all been waiting for. Let's see what this old girl gonna do. So I got the gas bottle hooked up. We got battery. She's cold. <laughs> cold start. Turn the gas on. And here we go. pretty good when it cranked up. Still got to burn all that 
water and oil and whatever it is in there. is just full of water like everything else sound good though let me hook this breather tube back up to the air box
think it did turn. side all that time and mystery oil and um, water that's in the exhaust so it's just going to smoke for a while till it clears out but it is smoky in here but the good thing is it's hitting it's hitting on this cylinder because it's it's hot so that means the rings are starting to free up. Let me get some of this smoke out of here. I don't know what the temperature is because the temperature pan is not working. But I know it's going to have to use it. The fan is hooked up. Try and get that idle screw uh, freed up, and then we'll run it again. Let it cool down for a second. Well, I went ahead and gave the oil change. I was going to change the oil filter, but it's been on there so long, it snapped my oil filter up. So I'm gonna have to do the old hammer or screwdriver in there 
and get it loose. But I'm not gonna do it right now. I just went ahead and drained it out, put some fresh oil. And uh, I think I got the auto screw to turn. Cool off and it's got fresh oil in it. I didn't want to keep running it with that old oil. But the engine sounds good. torch and heat it up and I'm scared it might catch the carburetors on fire. But uh
Like I said, I had to turn the table instead of the screw. Got a lot of smokage on this side because this is the side I have been dumping all that uh, Marvel's Mystery Oil and PV Blaster. So it's hitting. <laughs> there ain't no auto screw though. I'm gonna have to get that auto screw where it's gonna work because. I got the table out as far as it can go. I'm gonna hook up my other fan and we can blow some of this dust, I mean, uh, smoke out of here.
smoky smoke. So what I need to figure out now is how to get the fan and the gauge cluster to work so I can see what the temp is. Um, I know it's full of antifreeze. Like I said, it's going to take some time to burn all that out of the pipes that are oil and stuff. But this thing is not showing nothing. And uh, the fan hasn't kicked on, which I need to get my heat gun, temp gun, and see uh, what the temp is going on. Ooh, look at that spider come down. He's like, I'm out of here, it's too hot. <laughs> uh, the fan, I didn't check to see if the fan even turned. Oh, oh man. I think the fan is actually locked up. I forgot to check that while I had the carbs off. The engine sounds good. Like I said, I don't want to run it anymore. Look at all the spiders. No, it turns. Fan turns. The spiders came up out of there, boy. They said it was too hot. Fan's not. It's not locked up. But I don't know what the temp is because the gauges don't work. So I don't want to keep running it. Sure, I can get that figured out. Maybe we can put some kind of manual temp gauge on it. Or I can just get my heat gun, temp gun, or thermal gun shining at the cylinders. Maybe that can tell us what the temp is. So I got the fan to come on. Uh, it says it's supposed to come on around 180 to 200. Uh, it got up to like 214. It didn't come on at all. So what I did was just unplug the temp sensor right here on the radiator, put a jumper wire in it, and the fan does work. And the temperature came on down. I know the fan works, so the only problem is uh, it's either got a bad fan switch or something's tied in with the gauge cluster that's supposed to show. And with this, it's supposed to also let the fans kick on. Have to do a little bit more research on that. But yeah, she uh, she's purring. just keep running it letting it heat up cool off I think it's gonna burn all that stuff out of there like I say it's way better than what it was at first like I say you couldn't even see the inside of the shop so next step is going to be um, I don't know what I'm gonna do about the idle screw like I said the chokes are stuck but right now we don't need the choke um, pretty sure we're gonna have to fix that I'm not going to worry about that until I take the carburetors off to fix the choke. 
on each carburetor, well, all three. And uh, carburetors are not leaking, they sound pretty good. Uh, that cylinder over there, it woke up. So it's hitting on all four. So next step is gonna be getting the gas tank cleaned or getting another gas tank. Uh, we're gonna get the key switch for it so we can put all that stuff back together. Um, put the horns and stuff back on it. And we got to fix this brake problem on the back before we can ride it. Um, where I broke the brake hub and it is frozen, stuck to the wheel. Another thing it's gonna need, it's gonna need the clutch master. It's frozen and uh, the little side glass is busted so you can't put any fluid in it. Uh, the front brake one is frozen and the handles broke and I think the calipers are stuck what he told me from years ago but just to get it running and riding it's got a hydraulic clip set up so we're gonna have to get this hydraulic master hopefully the slave cylinder down here is good um, so it's gonna be clutch, brakes, fuel uh, seat. <laughs> it's got a, quite a bit of more work to be done. I've been looking for a parts bike and these things are hard to find as a whole bike. I found a lot of parts uh, across the internet but trying to find a parts bike is real hard. Uh, I did find a bike that a guy was selling but it just needed the carbs clean and I didn't want to just get another bike that was complete when we already working on this one and uh, we might as well get the other one running, you know, defeats the purpose of this one. Oh, and these fork seals are gone. Actually, I think that might just be the wiper seal. I did find a set of forks uh, online. So it's gonna, need, it's gonna need hundreds of dollars more for uh, parts, but uh, it can be saved, so I'm gonna shut the video down right here on this thing, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put everything up, and we'll try and get back with it um, sometime or another uh, another day. I'd like say I'm gonna keep running it, trying to get smoke to clear out a little bit, and uh, keep looking for parts. So I hope y'all enjoyed this portion of the. V45, well, yes, yeah, a V45 700S, <laughs> and uh, I'll just uh, keep y'all informed of what else I do to it, so y'all just hang tight, and uh, holler at y'all later.